Good morrow, sweet lords and ladies. I welcome thee to yet another Herding Cats Industry News Update. If there be nothing new but that which is hath been before, how are our brains beguiled which labouring for invention bear amiss the second burthen of a former child? Oh, that record could with a backward look, even of five hundred courses of the sun, show me your image in some antique book, since mind at first in character was done, that I might see what the old world could say to this composed wonder of your frame. Whether we amended or were better they, or whether revolution be the same, oh sure I am the wits of former days to subjects worse have given admiring praise. Thank you for coming along, David. Very good to have you here with us. Thank you. So how dost thou, sweet lord? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. So David has an incredible history in both film and theatre as both actor and director. He's also considered by some to be a local expert on all things Shakespeare. So, David, first question, obvious question. Why do you think there is so much mystique surrounding Shakespeare? I think that there's been a lot of um, different ideas brought to bear over the years because people are kind of... It's constantly being performed. Um, people are constantly looking for new ways to interpret it, new ways to, um, to understand what it means, um, why it remains so popular. And I think that there's so many different arguments and discussions and ideas about how it works and how it's supposed to work. I think sometimes it can get very confusing for people and I think it becomes um, problematic when people adopt one way and get rigid about that way or they adopt another way and get rigid about that. I personally um, have my own approaches to it. They don't necessarily gel with other people's approaches, but that's what keeps people coming back for more, I guess, why he continues to be performed. Now, I've heard quite a few people, I've had discussions in the past, that Shakespeare does not translate well to film. Now, what are your thoughts about that? I think like anything, it depends on the kind of that, the, that weird middle grey area. I think far too many people go, well, we need to focus on the language. And other people go, no, we need to take it with the visuals and go crazy with that. I think the best work happens when you understand that on stage it's all about text and language, words, which is what Shakespeare was writing for. He was writing at a time when the primary articulating element, if you will, was the language. We're now in a time with film where it's all about the visuals, and those are the basic sort of defining elements of those two forms. It can work. Um, there, there are many other examples, and isolated moments, a lot of Branagh's early work. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking particularly Henry V is a very striking visual film, but it's also rooted in some very terrific um, performances of the language. So that's it for another week. So until next week... I commend you to your own content.